Can I meet Jesus and I'm going to meet another man? Because there are some men that know mene mene, take care of a sin. They live there. That's why when Jesus encountered Saul, he told him, go to the city, you'll be told what to do. And Ananias told him and said, brother Saul, the Jesus that you met on your way to Damascus sent me to you. What do you mean? I had a glorious encounter. I thought it was a brother Saul. That Jesus you met spoke to me. So what you call an encounter has become my habitation. I live there. And God told Rejoiner, go to Bob Jones. He will tell you what to do. And when Rejoiner was coming in the morning, Bob Jones looked at him. And began to tell him about the encounters he had yesterday. And told him what the five things God told him meant. Where were you, sir? Are we all on earth? No, we are not. I read about Pastor Chris. He was to go for healing meeting. The same healing meeting you throw in casually. No wonder all our testimony are pain on the leg, pain on the back, pain on the tummy. He was meditating on how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about to? He was there for four hours. The meeting passed. When they came to tell him that it's time for meeting, the circumference around him, if you come near, the power of God knocked you down. Everybody who caught people were littered under the power. Meanwhile, the man was just meditating. Medi he, he was traveling. He was journeying. He was journeying. Meeting passed. He didn't know. I've gone for several conference many times. Sometimes you go to call him. He doesn't come. Why did you think Paul sent handkerchiefs? Do you think Paul was busy? It was in the place of intercourse. Sorry, I can't come out today. Take the hanky there. Anything my sermon of two hours can do, my lifeless handkerchief can do. And for more than 10 centuries, some people have not yet been able to cast out demons, whereas handkerchiefs have casted out demons. What is the difference? It's a lack of power. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey. Don't just become one of one of the many people. How can you come into your own generation and you are lost in the crowd? And then you want to return to Zion and tell them you lived on the earth. That's an error. That's an error. But what we distinguish you is the level of authority that you carry. And the way to authority is encounter with the Lord. Kill yourself on that mountain until the word of God comes alive or the Lord appears to you or something happens, you will not go back. Don't be a theologian. There are too many of them. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing that makes for spiritual power is the move of the spirit. See, this is why power is scarce. I'm telling you because few people experience these things. And those who don't experience it come out to argue. And they keep comparing notes. Notes don't cast out demons. I was sharing humorously in Cardona. You see a man who has subdued the, 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 the darkness of his generation talking. And then somebody who has no encounter, no, who has not touched reality, will come and perch on the comment box. <laughs> and he's talking what he doesn't know. Talking what they don't know. So it's on comment. Your platform is on comment box. And then he perches there. <laughs> like a gazelle. Bringing scriptures from left to right. Throwing them like arrows. How about this scripture? How about, you know all this scripture. How come you're on the comment box? <laughs> Before you know, some of them will take laptop and type four pages. Back, 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 back. No wonder you have time. <laughs> they will type four pages. They want people to read. After typing for two hours, it's only one person that will read it. And then you'll see one like. The like will hang like this. And then he will say, yeah, he has told them the truth. Who? You don't know that even to hear you is a commandment in the spirit. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm here, please. Hear, hear him. Who told you the 
they will hear you. I told my friends humorously, I don't fight for platforms and pulpits. Because even if they take you to Shiloh and you preach, nobody will remember you came. Unless there is power. There is a commandment in the spirit that says, hear ye him. If that commandment has not gone forth, if you like, go to TBN. They will forget that you ever came. You will finish preaching and come down. Even the people in the studio will say, yeah, how are you? They will not say, well, you the one preaching now. Well done, well done. <laughs> Don't join the bandwagon. Labor in the spirit. It's an honorable thing. The Bible said the glory of the Lord is to conceal a matter. He said, but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. He said the Christians in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica because when they heard the word, they went to search to see if the thing said were so. Some people will tell you, you don't need encounter, just meditate. You are joking. Those who have it know. They can tell you every spot that there was a shift in their life because it is never by coincidence. It's definite and deliberate. They will tell you when the slain anointing came on them. They will tell you when the anointing to pack crowds and overflow came on them. They will tell you when the anointing to heal the sick. It is definite. It's not coincidental. The second thing that makes for the power of God is the move of the spirit. Luke 1 35, he said, and the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you and that thing that will be formed in you shall be called the son of the highest. The Holy Ghost shall come. Now, uh, I was sharing with Dunsin two days ago and he said, what struck him about the scripture? He said, Mary asked, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. So there is a kind of power that comes upon you that everything that should be a disadvantage becomes the access point for manifestation. The impossible part of it is what makes the testimony beautiful. How shall these things be seeing that I know not a man? And he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. If there is no move of the spirit in your life, there is no power. Everybody that commands authority in the kingdom is a man flooded with the move of the spirit. This is not psychology. This is not emotional. It's a definite reality. The move of the spirit in their soul is strong. And the move of the spirit is not a feeling. Yes, yes. Sir, it's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. He said, not many days from now, the Holy Ghost, the same Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then somebody say, I have the Holy Ghost, so I have power. Acts chapter 4 verse 29. When they were flogged, beaten and threatened, they went back to their own company. And as they prayed, the place where they were was shaking. And they were filled with the Spirit again. And verse 33, with great power. With great power. It was the move of the Spirit that made for power. There are many people that are dry. The Holy Ghost don't move in their lives. They come on the altar and they know the songs to sing, to spoil the people. I know my songs. If I begin to sing them, I will jack up like a bird. I deliberately didn't sing them. Because it's not about a song. I want to show you something that you will deliberately practice. And then you will touch a sick person. He will be healed. Yes. It's not psychology. Yes, yes, yes. You will speak over something. It will happen. It's not psychology. Because there will be authority on your lips. And the Holy Ghost filled them afresh. And with great power gave testimony to the apostles of the resurrection. And great grace was upon them all. It was the move of the spirit that necessitated it. But how do you know the move of the spirit is in your life? There is a definite indicator for the move of the spirit. 
the indicator that the move of the spirit is in a man's life is not that he prays loud. It's not that when he carries the microphone, he's thundering like thunder. No. The indicator that the move of the spirit is struck upon a man's life is not that he's charismatic. It is an organic thing. A man that God is moving upon, sustained one thing, is called hunger. There is hunger for the presence of God. The day the hunger for the presence begins to die, the move of the spirit is beginning to wane. And the things you could command before, you will be shocked. You will try it, it will not happen. For most of us who are preachers, we are, most, we are at a most risky place on this subject. Because you keep dispensing. You keep dispensing. You, I told my brother, I'm not supposed to be here. I came here on the basis of relationship. Up until yesterday, I was lying down helpless. I said, Lord, Lord, I'm strengthened with might by your spirit in the inner man. I should be recovering. I can't even feel myself. But there is a truth I need to release into your hands. And that's why I came. It's a move. If a man is, if the move of the spirit is upon a man, it's not a feeling. It is unending passion for the presence. I was talking with a, a brother and he told me something. He said the best gift of the spirit and the first gift of the spirit is not one of the nine gifts that the world have taught. He said the Bible said in 1 Peter 2 verse 2, as newborn babes desire, desire, the sincere meek. The word there is desire. The ability to continually hunger for God and for his things. That's the best gift a spirit can give to you. If a man constantly desires God, he doesn't even need to go around preaching. He can kneel in his room and he can provoke revival over eternity because he's talking. Did you not read? When Jesus came, who provoked the revival? It was Simeon and Anna. They were not part of the preachers of their generation. They were just in the synagogue praying. And the moment they brought Jesus to the temple, the Bible says, Simeon moved by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost himself went to meet him. He said, this thing you have interceded for has come. So you come and announce it. The guy was not a preacher. Nobody knew him. But he could not leave the presence of God. The men that shake territories are not necessarily the ones that travel about. The men that shake territories are the men that will never back off from the presence. There is something that keeps them there. In John chapter 2 verse 17, he said, The zeal of my father's house. The zeal. It's not zeal for preaching. It's not zeal for miracle. He said, the zeal of my father's heart has consumed me. Jesus will leave a crusade and go to the mountain. And he will be there from night to morning. How come he's never tired? There was an energy on his inside that pulls him to God perpetually. And David knew it first time. He knew it. He said, as the deer panted. As the deer panted. As the deer panted. You look at David, he fought 44 battles. He won. You think it's about bows and arrow. He has nothing to do. He said, as the deer panted after the Lord, so my soul longed after thee in a dry and in a thirsty land where no waters is. At some point he said, even while I am on my bed, thy thoughts and thy words are the meditations of my heart. That's a warrior. So the power that David used to fight war was not skill. It was hunger. When God wanted to punish David, he said, you can do anything to me, but take not thy spirit from within me. I can afford to lose the throne. I can afford to lose everything, but your presence never, never, never. And so long as David sought after the Lord, the hand of God was perpetually upon him. Every time a man begins to seek the presence of God, he begins to unlock the heavens. It begins to unlock the heaven. This is the secret of Elijah. Many people thought Elijah was just powerful because he was a man of faith. Elijah was more a man of intimacy than a man of faith because everything you see Elijah does, he does it from the place of intimacy. He told the king, put your house together. There will be an abundance of rain. And then you will think he declares and he goes to eat and he went to the mountain and knelt down seven times. Mana, kada, mana, kada. Until he said, go and check go and check so he knew to unlock the heavens you do it on your knee and as he was groaning there at the seventh time the servant came and said i saw something that looked like the feast of a man so elijah created that feast in the cloud 
the feast was nowhere. He created it because he knows the secret of power. When Jesus was about to begin ministry, it was the season of temptation for him. The Bible said the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But when Jesus went there, he changed his season. He was engaging God because before the devil came, he went 40 days and 40 nights in prayer and fasting. When the devil came, that was a walkover. What Jesus did on that mountain that was supposed to be a season of temptation became a season of announcing and affecting his world. But how did he do it? By engaging God. By pressing into God. And as he was groaning there, the writings of the spirit began to change. We say come to the mountain to be tempted but because of what you are doing now it will no longer be temptation that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet the land of Zebulun the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light and he stepped down from the mountain and his fame went abroad the power to cause change is resident upon hunger how much of it do you carry how much of it? There are many Christians that are dry. Even when they are in church, they are already tired. One hour in church, they are frustrated. And then they are sleeping. They think they are tired. They are not. There is no capacity for the move of God. So the moment they step out, they were dozing in church. But as they enter the road immediately, they become agile. Because the God of this world still has a place in their heart. So no matter how tired they were in church, when they step out and they begin to interact with the one they have intimacy with on the internet, on the television, with their friends, they come alive. Hunger for the presence of God. These are ancient realities, but they are no longer taught. I read the story of Brother Lawrence and God told him that a servant in the kingdom of God is more important than a general. Because a servant is always there to attend to his voice. Some generals are giving away to commanding. So they are too used to the battlefield that they forget the sounds of Zion. They never return. They never return. They are obsessed with commanding the army. And they forget. They forget. So in the to Exodus 28 verse 1 and 2, he said to anoint Aaron and his son to minister unto me in the priest's office. So before legislation, there is intimacy. If you can't minister to him, you have no power to legislate over your territory. The reason we are handicapped is because hunger for God has diminished. Many things have truncated it. It is dwarfed. There are no men anymore that yearns after God. People are asking for the mantle of Babalola. Did you know that every three hours they pray in tongues for one hour in Babalola's house? For close to 40 years. Did you know that during the early part of the year, for the first four months, the man goes to the mountain to spend 40 days in prayer? Are you aware of the labors of Babalola in the spirit? Do you have his hunger? If that unction rests upon you, do you have the capacity to accommodate it? I was standing on the altar, an unction came upon me, I almost collapsed. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, and also subscribe.